when you wake up in the morning, is your attitude rise and shine or rise and whine? Do you consider your wake up activities to be a morning, M-O-R-N-I-N-G routine? Or a morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G routine? Do you approach the day with positive, habitual thoughts? Or are your thoughts habitual? Would you like to look forward to the new day? Today, our end result will focus on how to dismount the treadmill of tedium and climb aboard the cycle of success. Was that too many puns, Eli? As usual, Dad! Howdy doody, everyone! Eli's Dad here, and welcome once again to Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. You've been granted permission to eavesdrop once again as I mentor my one and only offspring, Eli the Magnificent. Now, you know, Eli, there really is only one reason why a person would wake up with a negative mindset. They've stopped dreaming! I'd like to share a few quotes with you to encourage you to dream on. These are the words of John Barrymore. A man is not old until regrets take the place of dreams. Now, Eli, do you ever notice that when you form an opinion of some people, the first thought that enters your mind is, he's old. What is it that makes you think that about someone? Isn't it that all they talk about is what they've already done and not what they're going to do next? Garth Heinrichs helps us by saying, in youth, we want to change the world. In old age, we want to change the youth. I got a question for you, Eli. When was the last time that you did something for the first time? If you can't remember, there's a strong likelihood that you've climbed aboard the treadmill of mediocrity. Yeah, you're walking, you're moving, but are you getting anywhere? You see, my son, being old is not an age thing. It's a mindset thing. If you're not thinking new thoughts, developing new ideas, changing your vantage point by adjusting your paradigms, then you are on a circular road that will only take you to destinations where you've already been. Most of us get vacation time from work. When people that I work with return from their vacations, I always ask them, so what did you do? Where did you go? Do you know what response I receive about 80% of the time? Oh, I just stayed home and relaxed. Really? Can't you even dream about going someplace new, someplace you've never been, doing something you've never done, spending time with people that are different than you normally spend time with? Same old, same old. Being old is not an age thing. If you can't even think of something different to do, to experience, to go, when you have a few days or a week during your vacation time, what does that say about what you do, what you have become during your work time. The treadmill of tedium is your destiny. Being old is not an age thing. May we talk about some solutions? Because that's what we talk about here. First, let's agree on one premise. We, as humans, were given some skills and gifts by the universe. In fact, one requirement to remain healthy is that we sleep on a regular basis. Did you know that, Eli, according to Wikipedia, the typical person will dream three to five dreams every night and sometimes as many as seven? Did you ever ask yourself why? It takes no effort to dream except to sleep. You can't help but dream. Now, we've also been given the gift of thinking, to reason, and to generate ideas. Now, this does take time and effort, and it takes concentration. Now, when you examine the great achievers of the world, Eli, you find that they've married these two gifts, dreaming and generating new ideas, together. In fact, 
each of these skills enhances the productivity of the other skill. Here's how it works. If you first dream a particular outcome, when you awaken, you can try and develop that outcome through logical, practical thinking. Or, if you first try to achieve a particular objective through logical activity and you're unsuccessful, you may dream about its completed achievement in your dreams. One skill feeds and enhances the other. These skills are siblings of successful accomplishment. Now, how do we know this? Well, Eli, one of the reasons it's wise to read biographies of successful people is that you see the elements of success repeated time after time after time. They're the same. And the results occur so predictably and without prejudice that we may define this tandem of skills as a science. Of course, the passion of belief and conspiring with massive action are essential ingredients in this recipe as well. Remember that science works predictably and without prejudice. I challenge you to read an autobiography of an achiever where this formula is not relevant. For instance, Hitler's Mein Kampf, an autobiographical, autobiographical work by one of history's most evil men, is one example that the science works without prejudice when passion, though it be misplaced, is an included ingredient. Science cannot discriminate good versus evil. It just works like gravity works consistently. And Eli, it will work for you. Clearly, the universe has given us this marriage of conscious thought and some subconscious unencumbered dreaming for solutions to enable us to make progress. There are three key ingredients needed to maximize these skills. First, you must order yourself to dream on a particular outcome when you are stuck for a solution. Second, you must capture that solution by giving yourself conscious, relaxed thinking and reflecting time. Please note that sometimes the answer will come to you whole during this thinking time, but most of the time it'll come to you in bits and pieces. And sometimes it'll come to you during a relaxed time during the day. Einstein received many of his inspirations while in the shower. Edison would rouse himself during sleep and write down all the relevant thoughts. Your gut will tell you what is germane, but you must capture the mind flash. Personally, I send myself a text so that I may retain and store the mind flash that I receive from the universe. You must publish the thought to yourself or it will perish. Third, you must take action upon receipt of the message. Take action and fine tune using your logical mind to enhance your progress. Taking action inspires the dreaming aspect in two ways. When you try by taking action, you automatically increase what is experienced on the conscious side of the equation. And when and if you get stuck, you go back to ordering yourself to dream the desired outcome. When you take action, the subconscious side is inspired to expand its repertoire of possible solutions. This is the cycle of success. Let me give you an example using yours truly. Now, when I decided to start this very channel, there were some obvious unsolved opportunities that I had to wit. I don't know anything about operating a camera or recording content. I have no idea how to upload material. I'm a complete ignoramus when it comes to social media. 
I don't know how to edit. What the heck is a thumbnail? And most importantly, what is it that I don't know that I don't know? All I do know is the pertinent content. Now, fortunately, part of this content was the formula for success in overcoming roadblocks. So with that knowledge, what did I do? I ordered my subconscious to come up with a solution visualizing only the end result of me being wildly successful. Ideas came to me in bits and pieces. First, I called the local community college and spoke to their IT department. No luck. Then I went to the IT department where I work. I received some reluctant, uninspired assistance. I was advised what camera equipment to buy and shown how to operate it. A small but significant step. Then I started to approach anyone that appeared to have some of the knowledge that I needed, that I was lacking. I came close a couple of times until finally I found someone that wanted to help. Now this gentleman didn't know everything I needed, but he knew enough so that I could begin to move forward again. Each step was progress and it allowed me to advance to a new starting line. Later, he ultimately, ultimately brought a lady with some YouTube experience into the fold. We moved forward again. The point is to advance one step at a time and solve each unsolved opportunity relentlessly with positive effort. Approach each issue in a singular way. Recognize a new place to start. Then start. Solve the issue and then do it again. As you can see in here, Eli, I'm still finding new starting lines to identify and conquer. Now the two major points that motivate you to rise, what are, so what are the two major points that motivate you to rise and shine each day? Number one, find a worthy dream to motivate. In my case, it is to educate, lead, and inspire you, Eli, and those of you that are eavesdropping with the necessary components, blueprints, and mindsets that they don't teach you in school. And second, stop procrastinating and just start. Solve one issue at a time and make progress you'll find that progress is the elixir of life. Now, when next we meet, our discussion will center on the thinking strategy to employ and why it will work for you. Please remember to subscribe, share our work with others that will appreciate it, hit the like button, and leave a comment to help and inspire us at Project Eli. Our thought for the day is by that most talented author, Anonymous. People that keep one foot in the past and one foot in the future always end up peeing on the present. Fireflies only light up when they move forward. Take action. We all need to become verbs, not nouns. And because we never end a meeting on a philosophical note, get out there and charge! I'm Eli's dad. <laughs>